Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, big hey. spender. Hey. <laughs> Spend <laughs> a little bit on me. On my Patreon.com. Slash <laughs> weird thing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Let's get started. We'll get started in a few minutes. Yeah, let's get started. It's uh, September 26th. Who's watching those hurricane tracks? Uh, <laughs> Who's watching are, are, the are, tracks? Are you, are you obsessively watching them? Are you a hurricane tracker? I'm not I'm, a tracker. I love it, man. Oh, yeah? Well, it was like, that was my entire childhood. My, oh, yeah. My, my, my stepdad oh, really? used to just, in the paper, they would they would have like a hurricane guide with all the names and everything. And then it was like big a fun maps. game. It's like, guess the path. Yeah. He would literally yeah. mark out at from the moment that it became a tropical i think he, he would wait till storm but he would track them from the coast of africa so that would be like a thing that would be on the weather every night if you're watching wsvn channel seven Ooh, uh would just be like i and i think i think the newspaper would even post like uh our time codes of the exact coordinates so you mm -hmm. could on your map oh yeah draw right. no, by, would have by the, the end map. of it it would be this tattered ass map with a bunch of uh a bunch of stuff and it was weird because it felt like he was rooting for it to hit <laughs> like because like you can't track a thing it's like like, it, like it's as if you were rooting for the lotto but you were very excited whenever you didn't win the lotto right like right. your brain is not prepared it's like no we you want it to hit you but you must must watch very very closely yes. for updates at all times uh in eighth grade earth science there was uh a cool like um i think it was like maybe all the way to the 70s or early 80s that somebody finally just drew every single charted storm ever and uh they were hoping to to learn how to predict storm paths yeah. turns out that they can't at no. all except for right. one thing uh kansas so south, <laughs> south of cuba uh never it never turns around and goes right north of uh, or, or or sorry east of cuba never uh, makes it all the way to Mexico, west of Cuba, uh, never crosses back over Cuba. That's the only thing you learned is that is that there's the uh, huh. uh, the, the Cuban Junction. The, that's the, the name of the, the movie. Cuban Divide. The well, Cuban that's Crossroads. that's it, it's interesting because uh, uh, yeah, it's going through Cuba tonight. Uh, uh, Ian, Ian, yeah. What effing Ian guy? It's a little quote from High Fidelity. Uh, oh. oh, but but uh, that one is coming through Cuba. Today, oh, and it's coming on the west side. On the yeah. west side, so that means no rain for us. Thanks, Cuba. The west side, but uh, yeah, so it'll it'll it's gonna curve a little bit back into Florida. Mm. It's gonna get it in the pit. It's gonna get in the armpit, right? That's, well, that's no, the, the side worry. That see the, a lot the, of them. Yeah, the worry is not that it would hit the Panhandle, mm. but rather that it would hit Tampa because the Tampa Bay area is very uh, liability to storm surges. They're Buccaneers. Oh yeah. Does Brady get to <laughs> put blame on his injured players? <laughs> Brian literally just tried to slip that in, like into just we're having a conversation about world's greatest con. And he's just like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like whether or not Brady can put, uh, uh, put some of the blame on his injured players. And I literally looked behind him like, <laughs> like, like uh, 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 usual so suspects. <laughs> And I just see uh, Stephen A. Smith and Michael Irvin just like, it does, Blady. <laughs> Don't soze me, bro. He, he, also, he, me, also, bro. he also totally no-sold my bit. He's like, yes, Brian, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, I think that's what it's about like. <gasps> oh, Although know. I did get you on a big hurt. Oh yeah! It's the new the new game is uh, to to get people to look at the television when the total T testosterone supplement ads featuring Frank the Big Hurt Thomas and, ah. Doug, Flutie. <laughs> and Doug Flutie when two two beta males are wondering why these absolute studs are still just slinging it at <laughs> their advanced ages and they find out that the secret is not that they're world class athletes and they've always been bigger and stronger than you. Hey what? Big Hurt, I noticed that no lemon no long no matter how long you boil spaghetti, it always stays stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's not the lie. No. Oh, okay. That would be a great one. No. <laughs> that, would be, that would be something. 
<laughs> well, no, they did. They they have done the one that like because they've had to get weirder the longer that this ad campaign has gone on, and they've gotten more forward with their dick metaphors. Mm. Uh, and so the, there's one where Big Hurt and Flutie are <laughs> randomly in a neighborhood for some reason. Uh, and there's like one guy with like a really powerful hose, and then one guy with like a real shrimpy dimpy. It's, it's all a tangled wow. up uh, dribble coming out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Alrighty, let me just make sure I got these in order here. Anyway, you just got to go. Oh my god! Oh my! Oh god. my god! <laughs> and then uh, Brian's like, "What?" It's like, look. And instead of it being a tragedy or something that actually is raising uh, your adrenaline, I mean, it's uh, big hurt. It's just big hurt. This, <laughs> this, this is the arms race. Yeah. Is, is this is how it escalates? Exactly. This is going to end with Frank Thomas coming. It's, it's going to end with hiring improv actors to wear ski masks and kick in the doors and say, "Nobody move!" And it's like, "Now a message from our leader: Turn around!" Yeah. And then you end up seeing it. <laughs> That's where it's going to end. <laughs> Yep. I eat caramba and eat my shorts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys want to do some weird things? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, let's do the weird things program. Remember, you can use the bang s command in the chat to submit show titles. All right, here we go. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the weird things program. I'm Bryce Castillo, as always, joined with my two co-hosts. As always, Justin Robert Young. Hi. And as always, Brian, always on time, Brushwood. Hey, I, I, I was here early. It today. was. It was. So so I, I, I maintain never being on time. Mm. <laughs> a good Brian uh. is always a late or always early. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is the By way the way, last season, his uh, nickname was surprisingly defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So uh, a little bit of a programming note. This is one of the big news stories in science. Uh, if you're watching this live... Uh, in a couple of hours, NASA is going to crash a satellite into a meteor. What? Oh, I thought, I thought what? That we were going to start off by bagging on Artemis again. <laughs> no, I think we, they're not doing Artemis right now, y'all. I think that's all we need. Stop trying to make Artemis happen. <laughs> so the DART program, which we, we must have talked about before, uh, the, 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 what is it? The double asteroid redirection test. Basically, the idea is they're going to throw a satellite into Di Dimorphos, uh, which is a, a, an orbiting rock around Didymus, and they're going to try to change the orbit of this rock by smashing a satellite directly into it. So we, we have seen satellites smashed into uh, the moon at the poles, and we tried to look and see if, if a lot of water got kicked up. We've uh, smashed uh, satellites into um, uh, asteroids to see if we were able to knock them off course, and all of this, of course, being in the case that, that we're on a collision course with an asteroid and we don't have the budget to hire Bruce Willis. Um, uh, uh, but in this case, this is a twofer, right? We're, we're, we're going to domino. We're going to knock a little guy who uh, uh, is going to smash into a bigger guy and see if that's able to knock it off course. Uh, oh, is that right? That's, that's what the diagram seemed, seemed to indicate. Oh, it is double impact. Uh, oh yeah, double asteroid redirection test. That's interesting. Yeah, it's they, we're we're gonna see it live. Apparently, you will be able to see it from Earth. They, uh, NASA will have a whole live stream, um, keeping keeping tabs on it. Apparently, you will be able to see it uh, in the sky. In the sky, because Didymus is visible generally. What uh, what what time? Oh goodness, that's a great <laughs> question. Well, I, I, oh goodness. Well, it, oh jeez. I'll, I'll tell you what. While, while you look that up, yeah. the reason I ask is because tonight, as soon as we're done with uh, cord killers, I'm going to pull out the uh, uh, the telescope because tonight is the first time in 59 years that Jupiter is uh, the closest it's going to be. So in my entire lifetime. So uh, as the sun sets, Jupiter's going to come up, and we'll get nice, clear views of it. Um, uh, this will be. I mean, this will be this evening. I, I, apparently, you'll be able to measure the change in the orbit of uh, the, the the orbiting rocket or the the orbiting rock, excuse me, uh, from from space. But uh, oh, you know what? Uh, ben Franklin corrects me. It's not that the little asteroid is going to smash into the big asteroid. It's going to do um, because it orbits the big one, right? It's, and so it, they want to change the orbit. Correct. It's it's going to do a. a, a, a what do they call it? Like a gravity engine or, or uh, gravity I think it's called correct. a dip dip de doo. 
That's the dip de doo. Dippity diddly. Didymus dip de doo. Didymus dip de doo. Dimorphos. Sir, Mr. President, it appears that we have completed the Didymus dip de doo. Activate Operation Didity be de doo. If you've ever wanted. Come on, that's great. Fuck it, we did the dippity doo. We did it. If you ever wondered. Hey, Big Hurt. I'm the President of the United States. If you've ever wondered. We dippity doo, Joe. Sorry, okay, we're not sorry. I had to get the Joe no, Next Joe. Story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Please go, go, go. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No. So, uh, uh, there are. Uh, if you have an asteroid coming at you, there are a few different moves you could do. The the one that's most obvious and most interesting is to throw a nuke up there, have an explosion, and maybe you can knock it off course. That's highly unpredictable, and you um, uh, can't say for sure whether or not you're going to make things worse, uh, or. Even worse than that, let's say you blow up the asteroid. Uh, for all you know, you're going to turn it from a single projectile that could be redirected into basically a, a shrapnel shotgun spread. Yeah, yeah, exactly, which would be very awful. So uh, another thing you could do is you could fly a, a spacecraft out there and either with just the spacecraft hang out next to the asteroid for long enough to where the minor amount of gravity attraction that the well, spacecraft will affect. Had, the, we'll kind of yeah. draw it. Uh, and then mm. the, the other one that I thought was interesting was the generation generation of a mass drive. So for that one, you would send a probe up that would land on <laughs> the asteroid. It would dig up chunks of the asteroid rock and just chuck them like a 12-year-old who's <laughs> angry. And each chuck would basically be propulsive and mm. actually move the asteroid so, off course. So in this case, this would be closer to uh, like, a, like the mm. way a centrifuge in a satellite causes it to change its... Uh, yaw pitch, that kind of thing. Can I ask a dumb person question about this? Okay. So the satellite, is that like a battle satellite that is sent up literally just to do this? Or is it just like a satellite that's kind of sitting around and you're like, well, I mean, Jesus, it's just up there. Let's let's just do something else with it. Well, well if you wanted to do a gravity drive, then I would assume you would just look around and see what, like as many different rockets and whatever mass you could put in there you probably, uh, uh, and, and then it just has to hang around and kind of like, come on, baby, come on, a little bit this way, out of Earth's paths. Yeah. You know, uh, but but if you wanted to create a mass drive, that would have to be an actual uh, robotic uh, uh, contraption that would, you know, break up chunks and then throw it. Yeah. Uh, the the so, DART but program. But this one, yeah. The, they, it is a satellite uh, designed for this because I do okay. think there is some amount of piloting going on, but I don't think it is a... Uh, well, they designed it to crash into an ar into an asteroid. I don't think they had a. So lot it, it has obviously the capability to do what its mission is, but but it was not like at some point it was there to I don't know like relay something and and for at black sites and now it's like well well we got to get rid of this thing one way or another <laughs> let's run it into well, a well, and, and that's what we did with the one that that smashed into the the pole of the moon it, it's like it had reached its end of life it was no longer you know they weren't going to get much out of it it was going to crash somewhere but they had enough juice to make sure that it crashed right at the pole to see whether or not it this got does it seem like an, like a like a real oh geez this satellite, man, nobody should ever get a hold of it. We should definitely <laughs> destroy it in space. What secrets are they putting on there, the satellite there they're going to destroy? There might be a little bit of that happening because, uh, I, I, I mean, what do I know? I, 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 didn't, I don't know much about this story. Uh, did the story say what previously the satellite was used for? No, it's, bi it's, it's, built, it's for built for this. for this. It okay. is built okay. for this. Okay, this is built for this. Uh, that, now, there's a... So uh, built to run into a thing. Yeah. Cause that I almost feel like why would it be a satellite? Like why wouldn't you just have a thing that's directly? There? They call it a spacecraft. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh. Well, because uh, if you just fired uh, a single payload like a bullet, uh, yeah. you, you better get that big shot. bullet like a Mario. Ooh. You you better get that shot. Sorry. You better get that shot exactly <laughs> right, and you get no corrections. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you if you bother to put some solar panels on it and yeah. a little bit of propulsion, propulsion. Mm -hmm. yeah, and get racing stripe. Um, apparently, and it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes it go faster. If you, if you, if you, if you want to train me to not try, I, no, I'm not. Stop. We're having a, this is fun <laughs> banter. It is. We're having fun banter. <laughs> apparently, the light Italian cube set for imaging asteroids, or Licia cube, Licia. Uh, is right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funnier when you do it to Bryce. <laughs> 
uh, is uh, it's apparently close to Didymus, so we'll actually get uh, hi, quote high resolution color images from a safe distance. Alicia is closer to Didymus. <laughs> that's an ESA. Or I've also got some projects to keep an eye on that. But that's coming up today. Um, if you're watching, does everybody live. scream "Mamma Mia" when impact happens? <laughs> oh my meteor! Oh my mother! Oh <laughs> my! my oh. Uh, in English, <laughs> oh my mother! Yeah. Uh, so uh, and and if you're listening to the podcast, then it happened probably a few hours ago. So check out the NASA. NASA did a whole did a looks like they had a couple of feeds going on. So <laughs> NASA yeah. publishes a paper saying if we did it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they're going to send up another probe in 2024 to measure more precisely how how uh, how strong this how, was. How Alicia did. Yeah. I well, Alicia. Alicia. Uh, fellas, you've probably seen uh, over the past couple of weeks that our nation's roadways are becoming quite the delicacy. What? Oh, I've been I've been chewing asphalt for a long wow. time. Wow. Wow. Walk high that one. You probably saw a <laughs> this dude driving like Jason Statham with his mouth. I'm gonna skip over to the chewing asphalt. <laughs> chewing asphalt he for said, years. He said the road was a delicacy. The yeah. road is a delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> so a few weeks ago, you probably saw that Alfredo sauce spilled all over what? a highway in Memphis. <laughs> Someone called Elise. Yeah. And then, like, a, that's how it, that's how it got then, into space. And then, like, a day later, uh, a truck full of tomatoes crashed on another no! highway. <laughs> it's just in um, SpaceX's Starman attempting to make U turn. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, but, it, it's a space program entirely designed around the idea that when you're here, you're family. <laughs> <laughs> so those two happened like the last week or two weeks ago. Uh, in Florida, they decided that uh, they were going to give you a uh, food and drink. Uh, a truck full of Coors Light has crashed. So on the nose. To, like, if All over you the want proof that we live in a simulation, uh, I give you this. <laughs> so where, this. Where in Florida? Where are we talking about? Uh, this was on Interstate 75, about 30 miles north of Tampa. Oh, my. Yep. Uh, Brooksville, Florida. Uh, this was about Brooksville? five days ago. Uh, uh, but, yeah, there's a, 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 there was a pileup, and the truck uh, 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 braked too late and <laughs> spilled all of – made a massive party foul. Oh, no. Gigantic my party beer. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, when asked for a quote, the driver said, I'm from the future, Marty. The, the hurricane, it hits here. <laughs> so, okay, so so it, this was because there was a crash at about 6 a.m. Uh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, and then they cleaned it up by about noon. How many beers do you think you a whole force could drink in six hours. Do you well, think it was I would imagine it's probably more the wrecked <laughs> uh, uh, big rigs than mm. it is necessarily the beers that you got to get out I there. I guarantee you all of those beers are all in a trench and there are a lot of happy 12 year old boys who are on bicycles. <laughs> oh, I thought, oh, wow. Okay. I, thought, I, was... I thought you meant a beer commercial. No, like no, 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 no. <laughs> it's no, like, I mean, well, I guess we are going to have to drink all this. <laughs> Taking their straws, put them in the ditch. No, but I mean, I'm sure they just swept it all off to the side and then, uh, 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 yeah. That's, uh, uh, they'll tell for years the legends of, did you ever discover Woods beer? <laughs> you know, just beer that was left in the woods. Woods beer. You get some road beers. Beers for the road. That's right. When you need a beer that you found in the wood by the side of the road, With you Tommy. know it's going to be a Woods beer. Uh, when you want water that's more as pure as the Rockies, <laughs> that's still more it's palatable than clear. Florida tap water. <laughs> <laughs> Go when, to the ditch in Florida and get yourself a Coors Light. When you want a beer as warm as the sun, <laughs> and has had no refrigeration because it's by the side of the highway, you know you're drinking a Woods beer. All right, I've got as a sterile as someone after a vasectomy. <laughs> Woods beer. It tastes like asphalt. So much so you're going to want to chew on it. The delicacy of the road. Uh, so I got a question for you. If I'm, I I'm, uh, you know I'm glad we're starting to ask questions. 
I think we should be asking more questions in this country. You know what? I got a question. What's that? Why haven't you subscribed to patreon.com slash weird things? I'm, uh, we've been question. all talking about it to you, about you, listener. Oh, we were talking to <laughs> yeah. your family. Ex- and your friends. And your friends. And, and your said, children. And your coworkers. Uh, I can't believe they haven't <laughs> subscribed to Patreon. They're all in agreement with us. Yes. That you, you not subscribing subscribe. is a travesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the CDC says that peer pressure is a serious and important dangerous phenomenon, except when it comes to causing people to subscribe at patreon.com slash weird things. It's me, Dr. Fauci, <laughs> and I would like to tell you that patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go to subscribe to this show. Thanks, right. Dr. Fauci. Thank you, Dr. Fauci. Just uh, door, doors on the right. Okay, I'm leaving now. Wait, uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, F-bomb. Uh, a- hey, uh, that's me. Uh, that's wait, the, what that's some, a, the, What are some of the benefits that people get if they subscribe? Well, in many cases, you're going to find that you get direct updates to your inbox, a subscriber-only Discord channel, and you can listen to the After Things podcast before anybody else. Uh, uh, would you like to respond to allegations that there's uh, uh, a vaccinating effect <laughs> to this? I travel via teleportation. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, wow. Dang it. Who knew that Dr. Fauci traveled via <laughs> teleportation? I'm surprised you didn't have more I questions for him, that. Dustin. Yeah, here. I don't know. I was a political guy. I was taking, I was taking a poop, so <laughs> I was not here when that was You're happening. dropping your own F-bomb back there. Uh, <laughs> I found yeah. this beer in the road. <laughs> but I found this beer. It's a warm beer. I got a question for you guys. Hey. If I told you something historic happened. Yeah. It happened about uh, when was it? 2016. Okay. About six years ago. Yeah. Yep. Ancient history. Many say six years ago. Many are saying as it was six years ago. Foxy fishing. You have my attention. And I'm, now I'm asking for your speculation. What would you call? What, what do you think? Uh, historic. Uh, uh, you know it's a long bamboo pole I have. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you are, sweet little angler. <laughs> Don't want to waste no time <laughs> dangling this shiny little trinket in front of a fish that didn't rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> Foxy fishing. This was a capture. What did I tell you? It was captured March 2016 uh, by two re- researchers in Spain. Oh, so it's not like a promo where a bunch of ladies in bikinis are right. fishing. It's not, no, it's this not is not like, a Girls Gone Wild commercial. Okay, just. gotcha. It's not Spanish hooters you wouldn't, or something. You wouldn't believe what happens when we hold when, when we, we hand them, them the, the reels. The reel. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so something happens naturally. It's called foxy fishing. It's in Spain. Yes. Okay. So, Spain. Uh, it's late afternoon. This has only just from... been published in Ecology. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, they did capture it in March 2016. I just had a siesta. Uh, I'm using the vosotros form. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay. Very, very formal. Uh, I'm, I'm still wondering why Portugal have to, has to have a technically different language. They're right there. Yeah. Um, yep. Now I want to do some fa- yeah. Hey Justin, you want to do some foxy fishing? And it's foxy fishing. I'm I'm into it, man. How many fish are you gonna catch in one hour of foxy fishing? Uh, you know what? I don't think I'll catch any fish because I don't. I, I ain't here to catch no fish. I mean, they call it fishing, but yeah, it's really about you know, the lure, and attracting a fox. Yes, a fox. Yep. This is where mm-hmm. you take a fishing pole. Uh huh. You take. Put your bait on a, it. A rubber chicken or something Wait that looks a like a chicken. Hold on. Yep. Is it because it's in Spain? Is it fox E like Y as an and fox and fishing. fishing? Yeah. You cook up a fox. Like fox and friends. No, 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 no. You 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 slaughter a fox, mm-hmm. you cook it, and you roast it, and you fish. It's uh fox and fishing. Fox and fishing. Yeah. You're, so you're you're suggesting like a surf and turf style yep. output of this product. So you're not okay. just going to watch old married with children episodes while fishing. I mean, it could be fox and fox and fishing, but I think 
the important part is the yeah. fox. It's yeah. just is murdering and preparing for consumption of fox. Fox hunts are a big deal, man. They are. The the but the English royals love it. Well, they love finding the, the aristocracy. Fox. I ain't never seen any English person catch a fox and eat it. No, traditionally in you England, they they search for the fox, they find the fox, they just give it a withering stare, <laughs> and then the fox is like, geez, all right, whatever. Yeah. And once it's gained sufficient sympathy from the commoners, then they just let it go. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think they usually that's the British eat the way. birds. That's the British way. That's but not the British joke. In Spain, I think you engage in uh, fox and fishing. Uh, actually, no, I think fox, you, you fox, fish for fox. E fox. fox. <laughs> Fox. Fox. Wait. With the TH. Because it's in Spain. Because, it, 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 yeah. España. Is, 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 is the lisp part of the. Oh, yeah. The España? Mm hmm. That and the vosotros form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. One, one, so formal. one for two. Uh, <laughs> they do take siestas, though, right? They do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two yeah. for three. They All love right. lunch. All right. I'm, I'm gonna they stick, I'm gonna love stick with the, lunch. They love lunch, y'all. Uh, All right. So your, your guest, Brian, is going to uh, be. Uh, you, take, you take what appears to be a chicken. You dangle it in front of a fox, or where you think foxes are, a fox bites. You you pull, mm. you got yourself a fox. That's foxy fishing. Now that sounds like a fun. That sounds like fun for the I, family. That I sounds got, like a carnival ride that yeah, I would play. I gotta guess. Okay. So you have it. you guys seen the videos of of I think it's in Chicago that they dump all of the uh, rubber duckies like. Oh. Tens of thousands of rubber duckies into the river that the used, river that wants to run the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but they're all live foxes. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> into an area so with a lot of dump truck. Just a of dump just truck of live foxes. Yeah. Not like caged. Bees. Not like prepared. And they get <laughs> all the fish. <laughs> the fish? Yeah. Yeah, that's foxy fishing. I see. Well, we wouldn't do it in America. No. That's cruel to the foxes. No, we would just do something civilized like foie but, gras. But the Spanish. The Spanish, they love. Savage. They love to dump a truck full of foxes, foxes. into the water. All right. The Spanish. Unfortunately, Justin, you're the closest to the oh, to reality. Are you Man, kidding me? God, why am I not so that, cultured? Not, why am I so cultured? Granted, why do I know so much about culture? Not that close, but you were. I'm a cultured close. man. This is. Uh, I've got a video here that we're we're looking at. Can you tell me just a little bit about? Oh, this is a fox sneaking up on what looks like. If you've ever seen uh, the Grunion running, where they they all on the shore are mating, it looks like a a drying up lake, uh, and a bunch of. Desperately trying to breathe, fish are flopping around in it. Uh, when this fox just went in there, grabbed the fish, and is taking it back to it's his a big fish. That's too. a big old fish. It is a big fish. Uh, yeah. So in March, two researchers in Spain watched a male red fox stalk and catch ten carp over a couple of hours. Uh, when asked for a comment, red fox said, "This is the big one." Jesus. <laughs> No, no regards. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually... It's a big fish. It was a very big fish. This is actually... How old is that? <laughs> <laughs> Older than me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dummy. I'm eating your fish. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. You're still around. Two oh, of oh. them. Okay. <laughs> Two references. The Sanford and Son. Dummy. Uh, this is actually, this is actually, you, you couldn't come up with one, huh? Good. Uh, no, I'm not <laughs> contributing to this. Uh, so this is actually very special because this is the first time anyone has ever seen a fox fish. Really? This is it. This is not a thing that is a known pattern of behavior. Uh, well, so the, uh, scientists have found, uh, fish remains in fox droppings, but they kind of always assumed that. They were dead fish or stranded fish, fish that they, came they, out they of. They were scavenging, not yeah. actually hunting live prey. Certainly not actively fishing for the prey. I mean, but this is kind of half and half, right? Because as Brian pointed out, this is a very, very shallow lake. It is a. It is more of a big puddle than a small lake. Yeah, that is for sure. Um, but you know what? So, like, it puts that, it, it puts fish on the table. It does. <laughs> it does, and and it is certainly. A, a smart learned behavior for the fox to understand that this is going to be easy prey, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess is really all you really want to prove is that like they have the instinct to do it. Yeah. 
but it's, so, but it's not like for anybody who's only listening on audio that like they're like a, like a bear or something that's like right on the corner of a river and they're like timing it perfectly. Yeah, these things are kind of there for the taking. It is, and, and he's he's just grabbing off the buffet. Do do we know what foxes normally like to eat uh, outside of? I, I I know chickens is, but but those are our domesticated animals that they're stealing. Uh, uh, in this case, we got fish that are just laying out in the sun. Yeah, uh, I am told. Um, bu- 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 rabbits, rodents, birds, frogs, uh, earthworms, and carrion. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so carnivores, they're carnivores. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, versus uh, a lot like a dog. A lot <laughs> like, like a uh, dog. Dead stuff, live stuff, don't care. Uh, just say, you know uh, what? Uh, food off of your plate. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, Oh. I just realized a story that I have to save for a great night tomorrow night. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, apparently, the, the researchers uh, uh, got tipped off to this when uh, this fox in particular did not run away when they were uh, really when they were noticing it. They were stalking him for a little while, uh, and he was like, eh, that's cool. I'm going to go eat some fish. <laughs> I'll go eat some fish. <laughs> Maybe he's showing off. Maybe maybe he's like, you may, <laughs> you ever seen a fox do this? <laughs> he's like, next thing, it's like, this just in, foxes ride unicycles. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Then he gets on his, yeah, his skateboard, turns his hat backwards, and freestyles. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently, one he's of the researchers... He's a hedgehog. The, one of the researchers said, quote, the most surprising thing was to see how the fox hunted many carp without making any mistakes. This made us realize that it was surely not the first time he had done it. Okay, what would what would a mistake look like? Missing the fish. So without ever missing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you know, fish in a this is really is fish in a barrel the way it's set up. Well, yeah. I mean, I but, think probably failing to grab the fish or like going for other stuff that might look like a disturbance but is not a fish. Like you know exactly what a big flopping fish look like. That being said, again, I don't want to mitigate the, the <laughs> breakthrough here, but these are they, they're flopping essentially on the grass. They're visibly flopping in every inch of the water surface for sure. It's, if they could talk, they would be saying, who likes fish? Yeah. <laughs> eat they, me, eat me. I'm just I'm here to eat. I'm a big Sue. I'm a big eating treat. Yes, I have I'm a fish. Last name she. <laughs> Turns out uh, it was another truck that fell over with some frozen frozen fish, and they just melted that way. <laughs> when you want a <laughs> gross uh, <laughs> out in the sunlight treat, wash down your fish sticks with a warm woods beer. That's right. Yum a yum dumb. How <laughs> I like to drink <laughs> warm beer. Warm, you like the warm beer. I love it, and you will too. <laughs> now, have you have you always loved your beer? I warm? love my beer as hot as the surface of the sun. That is incredibly oh hot. God. Yeah. But unfortunately, our narrow-minded society <laughs> does not allow for boiled beer. Okay. And yeah. so I have to settle for lukewarm beer. Well, you'd be. Now, is there a reason you can't boil your own beer at home? What I do in the privacy of my <laughs> own home ain't none of your business. All right. All right. Uh, I w- I, I, uh, it would have been fun to have Andrew here because I got a story about sharks. Do you guys know sharks very much? Uh, probably, yeah, okay. probably mm, I'm going to guess not. I, I've, I've taken a loan or two. I would, I would consider myself as shark strong because Andrew was shark weak. <laughs> boo. Boo. <laughs> Listener, you can boo your podcast right now. Oh, <laughs> res- reset your palates, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the daddest one. joke of the it's day. It's a weird one. It's a weird episode. Uh, no, <laughs> nothing for Red Fox. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, a fisherman off the coast of Australia, Trapman uh, Bermagui. Stop Wait it. I hope a I stop minute. it. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, a fisherman named Trapman. Bermagui. 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 Okay. I think we actually have him here live on the show. Uh, uh, Trapman, are you there? Oh. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. You're an Australian fisherman. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Broden. <laughs> he likes comedy. He's a, he's a comedy Oh, yeah, yeah. You're coming soon to ABC, the Auntie Donna. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what, do, what do you have to say about this fishing situation? Oh, yeah. 
I ain't heard enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever heard, Trapman, uh, uh, that your voice sounds very, very much like a didgeridoo? <laughs> <laughs> That's a didgeridoo for for comparison. Now you go ahead and talk. Really hear it. Sounds like a dog who's talking in his sleep. <laughs> who's talking in his sleep that's as if that's the thing that everybody knows by heart no not no canine somnambulism expert bryce castillo <laughs> listen you see dogs run in their sleep they bark in their sleep do they and growl yes they totally do you've never seen a dog hold on we have to stop the show you've never seen a dog growl or like run in its sleep Oh, I see one. Catch a fish. You never. No, that. yeah, that. But yeah. that's what it sounds like, not what you just did. Oh. I disagree. All right. <laughs> what, what did this? What did? What, what did Trap totally Man? Legitimate name? <laughs> trap Man make every person do? Yeah. He found this off the coast. I'm the Trap Man. <laughs> beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. Go get me some fish. <laughs> I wanna get some fish. Some Australian fish. <laughs> I'm getting a bit dish. Just come into this cage, you see. That bait in there is free. <laughs> There's nothing that will be wrong when you go inside of the trap man. We, uh, Mr. Trap Man here found, <laughs> uh, caught himself a shark uh, on September 12th, uh, posted about it on Facebook. And th- there was a lot of confusion about what type of shark it is. People were not quite sure. Uh, some of them believed it was a cookie cutter shark. Uh, some suggested maybe it was a goblin shark or a lantern shark. Um, uh, Trapman uh, disagreed with some of the folks online, saying it was quote totally not a cookie cutter. Uh, it is a rough skin shark, also known as species of endeavor dogfish or a gulper shark. Uh, some. Do we other... see a picture here? Well, just so, I just want to set your expectations right because maybe uh-huh. it, it, maybe in your head you're thinking like, oh, okay, gulper. Sh- okay, so it's more like and it's that's not... I immediately we all know exactly what a gulper shark looks like. That's not something that needs any kind of explanation visually. I mean, it basically right. looks like if Don Knotts was a shark. <laughs> I'm not taking that bid. I'm also not okay. taking that bid. I'm not taking that bid, but I want you to know it's not because it was a bad bid. <laughs> it's because I was scared of it. <laughs> well, and, you know, it got a lot of people talking because um take a look at this dang shark, please. What? <laughs> it has a uh, Jesus a gigantic bulging eye. A set of teeth that seem to be uh, jutting out of its lips. Uh, its skin is is rather rough, but I think you tend I to see that corrected. in sharks. I said Don Knotts. What I meant to say was Steve Buscemi. It does look Buscemi-ish. It looks bu- Hello, Buscemi-esque. Hello, fellow sharks. <laughs> oh, no. How do you do? That is it. It's hello, fellow sharks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, apparently... Uh, uh, this is uh, a quote. We discover new species of deep water shark all the time, and many look very similar to each other. So this is not as earth shattering as the first Fox filmed fishing, but uh, it's a weird looking shark. It's certainly shark. weird. And so it just kind of highlights exactly how many wild and crazy things just exist in, in, in the deep sea that we are not so it, as it, familiar with. Also, if this is a deep water shark, then... Um uh, oftentimes, like the literal shape of their face will change uh, with the pressure differential oh. when they get out. So, oh, um, that's a very good point. My my guess is uh, down at depth, its face doesn't look quite so Steve Buscemi like. Maybe it does. I don't know. They don't have light down there. You don't have to. It doesn't matter what you Can look you like. Can you Google other pictures of that kind of shark? Maybe we'll have. Maybe there's like a little. Uh, a yeah, little if point. we look up the Endeavor dogfish, which is Endeavor what dogfish, I believe it might be. Um, here's a picture of an Endeavor dogfish. Swear to God, if it's just Steve Buscemi's IMDb. No, that's 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 me. <laughs> wow, yeah, you're right. So it looks like it it certainly inflates. Yeah. It does have a big eye, though. Uh, the that big eye well, stays, it's, it's gonna, yeah. It's, it's going to be dark down there, so that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it does look like, the, from, from the picture of the shark, it does look like it has a pretty large uh, 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 cornea, the opening. Uh Pupil? Iris? Iris. Pupil? Uh, pupil? D- whatever. Uh, it looks that's weird. That's probably the pupil. Um, but, uh, the pupes. The pupes. What uh, are pupes? <laughs> that's for our friends at Live Science. Um, 
I got one last little story for you. Good. Fun. Uh, uh, it's about time that we cut loose on this episode. <laughs> Enough with <laughs> this deadly serious stuff, man. We're cutting. We're cutting loose. We're. What it's is fun time? What's the last thing you would casual expect? weird things? What was the last thing you would expect in Shoe Pond in the city of Beverly in Northeast Boston? What is the last thing you would expect? City of Beverly, Northeast Boston. Hmm. Uh, it must have been 1975. <laughs> Me and my buddy had just finished two eight balls of cocaine. <laughs> he said, let's take a run over to Beverly. Now, at the time, I must admit, I thought Beverly was just a hot, tight piece of roadside down the road. <laughs> Turns out it's a town. And uh, we... Uh, uh, went to a place called Shoe Lake. Bloop. <laughs> anyway, we I was so high, I don't remember what I saw there. Uh, it was, <laughs> but you what? won't believe it. What is the last thing? <laughs> what is the last thing you would expect in old Shoe Lake? The, well, the first thing I would expect is a lake full of shoes. Yeah. I'm going to say the first thing I would expect is that could, for could, everybody, like, Shoe pond. Like, hey, yeah, a shoe pond. Yeah, like, like I'm going to throw all the shoes in the pond. This is a Boston accent. <laughs> Wicked pisser. Let's go. <laughs> I know what it is. Oh, you know what it is, Brad. Oh, yeah. It's, Have you been there? Uh, well, no, no, no. This is the last thing I would expect. Oh, the last thing. The last is, thing. Is, is a bunch of uh, young kids coming back from a sci-fi convention. Think yep. it'd be real funny to just take like a, a eight-foot-tall mannequin, plant it in there. Chewbacca. <laughs> Four, five, okay. <laughs> He's falling out of his chair. He's falling out of his. T- he's taking so a knee true. like Tebow. He has been. He 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 waylaid himself with Chewbacca out of his chair, and he now needs to be on one knee to catch his breath. That's the level of talent that we are working with on the Weird Things podcast. Brian made a Chewbacca joke, Chewbacca. and now can't help but. Go down to one knee. He's laughing so hard. He tried to get up and he couldn't. He tried to get up and he couldn't. He made one move to try and get up. He was unable to do it. He immediately went back down. All right. So, um, uh, the question was, what is the last thing I would have said? Sure. Yes. I think that was it. That was it. Okay. A chuba- okay, I'm we've got glad one. that my Shark Week joke <laughs> was stricken from the record. It didn't even survive the episode. <laughs> Justin, do you have a guess of what the last thing you would have imagined in Shoe Pond was? Uh, the last thing I would imagine in Shoe Pond, considering it is the last story in a Weird Things episode, would be a functioning healthy lake where... <laughs> Where, where families just kind of walk around and they make good memories and uh, oh. it's just a beloved staple of the community. What if uh, what if I told you Shoe Pond was briefly the home of Schubert? I uh, want to... I, I don't know piano well enough. But I, <laughs> I wanted to... I wanted to do like a piano. Like... Is that Schubert? Uh, yeah, no. uh, sure. Why not? I think that's Chopin. It- no, that's that's Fear Elise by uh, I think Beethoven. Is it? I think. Anyway, it's Roosevelt. all the same. Uh, well, uh, so it turns out in uh, this 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 tiny little pond in Beverly, Massachusetts, uh, became the brief home of a seal. A gray seal uh, <laughs> was in the pond for so long that locals gave him the name Schubert. Well, uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I guess Boston is close enough to the sea that I, uh, I, I can comprehend. Yeah. Seals. What? What? What, well, what, is, what? What is? What is the local flora and fauna of of Beverly? Do we know? Oh. Because I want to know if this animal got a kiss from a rose. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna close that tab now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so. 
well, <laughs> firefighters and wildlife F, uh, 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 experts were trying to get Schubert to leave the pond. He shouldn't be I there. I can't believe Brian was right with Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a closer thing. It was close. Schubert uh, would would not go with authorities, and so um, uh, but Schubert did get out because. Uh, uh, Schubert uh, went to the police station and said, please take me home. <laughs> he Wait, what? <laughs> he showed up at the Beverly Police Department uh, and went even through the parking lot to uh, the front. There's a side door, I guess, of the police station. And uh, the, the folks on the midnight shift uh, helped Schubert get back to. Uh, Wait, how did a bunch of <laughs> Massachusetts cops like. Throw him in the back, like, 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 what, what happened? <laughs> like, did they know, like, mm. marine biologists, or, or know where to take them? Or? Well, I, I, I would imagine that whatever um, animal wranglers went to go try to get him, uh, I would imagine that, uh, like many animals, they have good sniffers, and he probably was like, I wonder what that was. I'm going to go investigate. And oh, and, interesting. And smelled his way over there. Yeah. Well, no, no, I'm uh, not. I'm not shocked at how the seal got to the police station because we don't know exactly even how far the pond is from it. I would imagine if it's a small town, it's probably not that far. Uh, what I'm what I'm surprised about, especially if it's the midnight shift, is that like you know, not every animal can go in the body of water for which you think they should. Right. Like mm -hmm. in Oakland, uh, in Lake Merritt, there was this habit of people that would get ducks or chickens that would then just throw them in the lake because oh. they're like, hey, this is where animals go. Yeah. Here you go. And oh. then they would be brutalized by the native animals. Like, yeah. So I would imagine a seal needs to go specifically back to where the seal was mm -hmm. before. And uh, I guess good on the, the Beverly Police Department for knowing where that was. Yeah, uh, the, the Beverly Police Department and the Associated Press reported this. The seal was quickly corralled by a team of wildlife experts, firefighters, and police okay. department's entire midnight shift. Uh, Schubert appeared to be in good health and was a little sassy in the early morning hours. The seal was transported to Mystic Aquarium in Mystic, Connecticut, where okay. aquarium staff will perform a medical exam and release him back into the wild. So they knew exactly. They they knew it was going to the aquarium when when they when they corralled it. And they yeah. probably still had people there that were waiting to corral it. Uh, uh, could we at least take a look on a map how far Beverly or how far Shoe Pond is from the coast? Um, yeah, uh, and, and in fact, uh, 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 folks about an hour and a half flight. <laughs> folks believe that uh, uh, he took drainage pipes uh, and Ow. maybe some creeks, some creeks and some creeks here. So Beverly and uh, Shoe Pond here. It looks like it's. It's up a little, up a little on the Crane River, maybe an, an offset of the Crane River here in. Uh... Yeah, that seems doable. Every so often, you hear uh, sad stories of like a, a porpoise or a dolphin, you know, that that starts going up river and just, you know, uh, Ends not up. able to figure out which way is which and keeps on going the wrong way. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the workers said he's acting like a typical feisty four-year-old gray seal. We plan to release them to a quiet, remote location near other seals. So that's good. A little bit of good news for you there. Right on. Well, that is uh, that's it for the weird things program. You guys want to do some picks? What have you been up to lately? Uh, I I, I did watch the the uh, the Andor, but we talked about that on another program. Uh, uh, but I I gave a try to a little gem called Trombone Champ. Oh yeah! If you uh, if you have fond feelings and memories about uh, rock band and rhythm based games from B Money, uh, your Dance Dance Revolutions, your Busta Grooves and whatnot, mm. uh, imagine if it also sounded terrible and hilarious mm. and was uh, uh, all about collecting toots. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out this is the perfect cross section between me and my nine year old daughter. Uh, let's take a little listen on to what it sounds like. We're watching the trailer, so it actually sounds okay. Yeah, but when you actually play, it's hilariously awful. Yeah. It's it's very, very fun. I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. I'll probably keep on playing it with my kid. Nice. Uh, it's only 15 bucks on Steam. Oh. It's Trombone Champ. So it's a it's a PC game? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you play it with the mouse. Oh. It's just up and down, and, and you click uh, Don't Forget to Breathe. Uh, oh. Like, for example, you, you play, like, uh, 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 Thus Sprock Zarathustra. Mm. So it's just, like, <laughs> your whole job is to just hold down the button and go, 
<laughs> then it's hard because you have to move fast. It's like, wham, 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 wham. Or, or you got the take me out to the ball game or the. Uh, Are there any tell. ska? Uh, they, they, you know what? We'll see if they're able to get the licenses. Let's get stuff. the DLC <laughs> hey. popping, baby. I need some ska up in this trombone champ. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Give me some real big fish it's, up in this hoe. It's been very fun seeing people make, make mods and. Do other songs because is there like a free play mode or some something oh, where yeah. you yeah, can yeah, just yeah. mess around? Uh, it's been fun seeing stuff about that. Very cool. Trombone champ. Uh, Justin, you got anything? Yes. I. Oh, I have a pick that uh, we worked on. Um, Don't explain is a new podcast. It's launching this week. Hopefully Ooh. tomorrow. Uh, uh, unless things are stubborn about listing a new feed. <laughs> uh. But it is the latest from Dog and Pony Show Audio. It has been in the works for over a year. Uh, and it is by Will Saddleberg, who won America's Next Top Podcaster two seasons ago. And as part of his victory, uh, developing a podcast with Dog and Pony Show was one of it. This is the result. And uh, I think it's really, really good. The conceit is this. Every trope that you have ever seen on you know, in television and, and movies, all at one point began as something brilliant. Mm. And so this podcast will endeavor to tell you those stories. And the first one that we're going to tell is about rock star biopics. So uh, the, the, you know, Elvis, probably the most, the, the latest uh, uh, version of it, uh, how the genre came to be. It's one of the most parodiable genres. In fact, it was mm -hmm. so effortlessly parodied by by walk hard that it almost killed the genre not only because it revealed all of its secrets but it also bombed <laughs> so uh it took a while for for the uh the genre to get back on its feet but in three episodes we're going to tell you that whole story wow. i'm very proud of it and uh, uh i know will worked extraordinarily hard on all of it so uh keep an eye out for that yeah in uh, in uh yeah but it's it'll be... the podcast directories i guess yeah and also it'll be in in a lot of the feeds so it'll be in the the X3 feed, it'll be in the World's Greatest Con feed, it'll be in the Raise the Dead feed. So if you subscribe to any of those, you'll you'll be able to hear the first episode there, uh, and then you'll be able to find the other two where you find your podcast. Nice. There you go. Check that out. Um, I'll gotta... find my podcast on the side of the highway. When I want a warm <laughs> podcast, I like I like my podcast sun baked. <laughs> A semi-truck containing podcasts tipped <laughs> over in Florida today. Finally, <laughs> I can start to listen with my ear canals toasty warm. <laughs> we, we should be toasting our podcast. Toast, boil your podcast for safety <laughs> before consuming. Uh, I got a pick. I, I don't know. I'm, I might have talked about this already, but I, uh, over the weekend, got, got really back into Cult of the Lamb. Um, There's a roguelike uh, a video game where you are a lamb who's about to be sacrificed and instead start your own cult to another god who saves your life and you end up doing kind of this mix of kind of hack and slash dungeon crawling and uh, like town building like you build your little cult compound and you buy them beds and outhouses and farms and you give them dark satanic rituals and stuff, but it's also got this very like cutesy aesthetic to it. Like almost, a uh, uh, almost happy, uh, very much like happy tree friends, sort of. Very sure. Cutesy. Sure. Uh, but, uh, I, I really dig it. And I think it is relatively, uh, uh, approachable for a game, for a roguelike game. Like it's because normally with, with those games, part of the point of it is the frustration that you can never really like succeed unless you get really, really, really good at at the mechanics. Right. Whereas this is chopped. This has a bit of a story progression. So you kind of they, they sort of chop it up a little bit on the critical path. So um, there are challenges, but it's not like, OK, we're throwing you right into the whole thing. You have to figure out how to get better uh, on your own can hey. i can i confess that that while when people call a game uh, uh say it's a roguelike game I, I i have a vague general understanding of of what to expect from it mm. but are there a clear set of defining characteristics of a of a roguelike yeah they're they're usually a, a game where uh especially for roguelike or roguelite games where you're going out venturing into a 
game section, right? Like here, you're going into these uh, areas to to attack these gods, um, and uh, but then you come back to a place of safety to and, buy better weapons and so and, on. And so, if you die along that progress of of however long it takes you to get from point A to point B, you'd have to start from point A all over again. Um, Got it. And so, so frustrating. Uh, isn't yeah. it also they, they, and, they, that the levels kind of randomly change? Or mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's the other is that it's like the they're not pr procedural generated. procedurally yes. generated, right? Mm -hmm. And and with rogue like games now, because because rogue. Rogue light games, Jesus. So, because uh, like Rogue, there was not, not even progression. There was not like meta progression where when you died, you would be stronger the next time. That's what a lot of Rogue like games are now nowadays, where after you die, then you see story stuff, or you upgrade, or you spend points and things. And so with Cult of the Lamb, that other side is building up your compound and doing other little almost Animal Crossing sort of things. So I really dig it. Uh, I've got it on the PlayStation and it works really well. Uh, there's Ash, Ash played through it and she really, really liked it. Yeah. And, and uh, apparently there's like multiple endings and everything. So uh, cool. uh, there's there's reason to play through it multiple times. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I, I believe on PC it's got Twitch integration. So when you add people to your, uh, to your cult, it'll get your Twitch viewers or your Twitch subscribers names and plug oh, them in instead. Fun. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Uh, so that's my pet, Cult of, Cult of the Lamb. All right, guys. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think we made it pretty weird. I don't know. How about you? I think we made it pretty things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, oh, Brian. Do you just want to say it again? No. I you want to say dummy. it again? <clears throat> say it, dummy. No, you knock it off. Too. <laughs> it's been weird. Shoebucker. You <laughs> son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> 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 Shoebox. Shoebox. <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Are you saying shoe? Shoe. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his strap, it, but it's suede it's instead all, of leather. Yeah, his bandolero <laughs> of of sandals. <laughs> yeah, guy's just driving a truck. He's like, gonna deliver this course live. What in God green earth? <laughs> Is that a fuck? Is that, is that, shoe, is that shoe baka? Is that shoe baka? <laughs> All right, we're going to take a minute and come back with some after things yeah. here. I've got an update on our structured. Good. Ooh, nice. Do you need to use the bathroom? I do. Then go. I'll uh, do it. Uh, 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 deuce. Then you Justin. better go. <laughs> when you need to go when you need on the it. side of the highway. It's only 15 miles. Make sure, make sure your uh, leavings are toasty warm. Shack. I like warm things. Love Shack Baby. If I were doing this show, I'd name it Warm Things. Warm Things. Are you, yep. Are you like things. Well, what about what about cold things? Don't like them. You don't like don't any cold. I don't hold with them. You don't hold with them. No. Oh well, and it's hard Down to hold. Down the old pathway of life, I say keep it warm or get out of the storm. Oh wow, that's that's, that's a really clever, old, clever thing. I can tell you spent a lot of time thinking about you that. You can't one. criticize it because it's very old. That's right. You can't. <laughs> not like this Chewbacca. Chewbacca. I'm not a fan. Of, that's why I'm asking for your vote against oh. my opponent, Chewbacca, this <laughs> November. <laughs> Cocaine Chewbacca. Yeah. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Um. Hi, Justin. Hey, what's up, dude? How's, uh, uh, you have a good weekend? Do anything fun over the weekend? Um, yeah, we're, I don't know. My life is, is spoken for until, like, January, so, uh. Oh, yeah, because this is, we're in, we're in stuff. production on World's Greatest Con Season 3. Mm. We've got the election stuff. I still got to do some traveling for that, which I have not scheduled. I got to go to this cult meeting in in two weeks. There's just a lot of... It's busy. It's busy. A lot of stuff happening, man. A lot of stuff. But uh, uh, our friend Rachel is in town. Oh. Uh, she was going to be in town for uh, the podcast tomorrow, for Great Night Tomorrow, but... This dank hurricane. Oh no. Uh uh Forrester. She got like the scare email from uh the the airline that's like, by the way, 
everything's going to be screwed. Probably. Maybe. Uh, uh, so if you want to go sooner, you can go sooner. And she's like, okay, yeah. So she's going to leave tomorrow morning, which is a bummer. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So there's that. Cool. Well, it was cool that she's around. Hey, Bri. Yo. Uh, did you want to talk about Andor? I, wa I watched Andor. Over the uh, weekend, I, uh, I, you know what? I, I here's my question for you. I, I don't mean I, I don't uh, ask you to. Mind, I haven't seen episode four yet. I only watched the first three. I only watched the first three too. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this that show doesn't make sense to me, and I didn't watch Rogue One. Uh, you know what's funny is I only watched Rogue One once, and. Even when I watched it, I felt like there were too many characters for me to keep track of. As a result, I kept track of none of them. Okay. Uh, I think Andor was the lead character, <laughs> <laughs> but I do not know. <laughs> but I know he ends up in Rogue One, uh, and right. I know how that movie ends, uh, but it doesn't matter. All of it is totally irrelevant for this. Um, what I liked about it was that I knew nothing. Uh, I, I knew that this is a, a podunk uh, mining town with corrupt everyone and everything. And this person, uh, for whatever reason, is looking for his sister. And and uh, along yeah. the way, huh. um, uh, I, I found uh, the, the droid f friend very endearing. I found the world uh, uh, filthier than I've ever seen in a Star Wars thing with the explicit selling of sex and, um, and the fact that death had teeth in a way that I've never seen in Star Wars, mm. where it's like, you know, just 20 unbroken seconds of panic as, you know, like, uh, uh, I, 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 I liked, I liked the, the grit that I perceived as a kid that as an adult, I now understand wasn't really there, uh, seems to be fairly present in this. Interesting. I, uh, and, and uh, granted, I was not exactly giving it all of my attention, but uh, I don't know. I thought the the stakes of it were just kind of strange, and I I like. What do you think? Strip, skirt. Well, New York, of course. Yeah. Uh, strange, strangest stake. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh yeah I don't know. I thought like two guys died. It's okay, big deal. Thanks. Like, this is Star Wars. There you go, dead stars. I don't know. It was, uh, but, no, but I, but I, it's, it's the difference between all politics are local, Bryce. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the difference between if you're watching Miami Vice or the A team and a gun is fired and a person falls down versus if you're watching Die Hard and a tense moment happens and then a trigger is pulled and full on blood splatter covers the wall, you know, uh, Technically, the exact same thing. A person died, but but they feel very different. And uh, the but I guess I guess it was like I because I saw that the the moment that you mentioned it, I was I don't know. I thought I thought there was more lead up to that. I was like, I okay, this uh, that's that's what I dug about it. Yeah. It's just you know right right out the gates. It's like uh, oh no, that's a crushed windpipe, and that's a dude. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I guess I, so. You're still in. Uh, You're in I, on I, Andor. I I I have I made no more progress since we last spoke about yeah. it, which is why I I can I tell you what I'm it. getting uh, a little annoyed about. Oh, well, what do you got? This Dragon House. Oh, really? I've no. I fell off a few weeks ago with these dragons. Look, they all live in a house. <laughs> They're gonna find out. They stop being polite. Start getting real. <laughs> I like yeah, get getting real for it. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, and they just turned over like. They just turned over the entire cast, uh, except for two people. Uh, so now it's like, oh, not only are they new people, but they've all changed. Right. Good one. Yeah. You kind of <laughs> have to. Game of Thrones kind of had to earn that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, and, and you think that, like, if they were going to do that, you'd make sure that that first episode is, like, action-packed. Like, there's all sorts of stuff, and people are High doing stuff. Dang. There's, look, there's things that happen, but also <laughs> it's like the inciting incident, I'm assuming for the entire season, is one character dying. And has, they, has, and it, they, has it happened yet? And they, and they make that very transparent at the very beginning. 
Yeah. Boy, is he still when alive? This dude dies. God, gonna when be a this power dude dies, oh, and, and everybody's they're all getting ready. Oh, they're getting there, and everybody's there. And then it's like putting he, on their cleats. He collapsed at the end of the last episode, and you're like, finally, this next episode. Nope. Time jump 30 years. Call. Oh. Not 30 years. I don't know. Wait, whatever. Oh. 20 years. And it's like, he's old. Still hasn't died. <laughs> in the Die. Chat, in, the, in the chat. Die now. Die. In the chat, they're calling him King Sneakers. He is. <laughs> he is. He is. Yes. <laughs> he's even kind of got the hair. <laughs> and also, it's like, they time jump, and the stuff that they were talking about 20 years ago... Now it's like advanced to, hey, you really need to believe this thing. Uh, I swear. Time you better stop telling me to believe this thing. Time I'm jump. I'm very old. We've been talking about this for 20 years now. <laughs> time jump. And the, one of them is making a red fox joke. The other one's <laughs> talking about Chewbacca. Is that Chewbacca? <laughs> Why, the prophecy said he'd be the last thing I ever saw. <laughs> 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 Listen up, dummy. I got dragons. <laughs> Oh no, it's a blended fever dream of all the weird things, hosts. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. All right, you want to do a little uh, little after talk? Yeah. After things? Yeah. All right. Ready. Here we go in. Three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Brian Brushwood. Yeah. And Justin Robert Young. Hey. As always, this is the show about being creative professionals and doing stuff online. We talked last week a lot about uh, this, uh, this this calendar to do app structured. We talked, yeah. a, talked a lot about I, it. I'm, 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 I got, I got thoughts. I got notes. What, what did you think about it? Uh, if I, well, I guess to, to, just to your, reset yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it up. it's a, it's a calendar app, um, and your calendar items are also tasks, and so uh, you're both setting the time, your day, and you're making basically check off boxes. Um, for your day, how how how, uh, uh, how 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 did that work out for you, Justin? And you you say and you tried it. Um, I I don't know if it's a not for me thing yet, mm. but it's bordering on not for me for for a few reasons. I do really like the uh, uh, UI. I like the idea that it is exclusively focused on your day. And not necessarily your week, not necessarily your month. I feel like that is a smart idea. Focus yourself entirely on that. Not to say that you can't easily go between things, but uh, uh, that is your main your main focus. I also like the idea of having a bunch of to dos that are kind of evergreen that are easily added into your day. If you are like, oh, I'm looking at my schedule. I have a bunch of empty time. Now let me go to my other view. I like these things. Uh, oh, I could do that today. I could do that today. I could do that today. Boom, boom, boom. I think it could be a little cleaner in adding, in, in adding those things. I think they prompt you for times on stuff, especially for tasks a little bit too much. Uh, uh, it would be almost even more helpful to have like a split view of your tasks and you could maybe just even drag them into you, your schedule like like because that's the thing is there's no drag and drop on this like there is in every other calendar app yeah which is very difficult here was the other big frustration that i had with it hmm. number one i paid for their ding dong flipping service because oh. it would pull in calendars only to find out afterward that they do not pull in google calendars I, what yes they do let me take a look at that because they do and i it was not it was weird but i did see how i set it up over the weekend I'll okay we'll take a look because i you can but it is it does look weird it doesn't like it doesn't bring in your colors like that's the thing i look for with my google calendars it's like okay that one's purple that one's red i know what they are it also is weirdly color centric like mm -hmm. all of the things are one default color unless you change it but they don't really give you a whole lot of guidance on like what okay, well, use. this should be a blank or this should be a blank. It's a little bit more just for people to have their own little OCD elements of it, which is fine because I have those elements and I would like to I would like to have those options. 
Though I will say, uh, just on that, because uh, I'm coming to this from Tasks, which is just about to-dos, and the thing I wish Tasks had was colors. Because yeah. I, 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 the one thing I do like about seeing the day in structured is, okay, that's that type of work, and then that's that type of thing. Um, but they're, A, they call it colors instead of labels or flags or anything uh, kind of productive um anything substantial yeah it's like uh, uh, uh emotions <laughs> it's like, what uh, and yeah their color palette is kind of weird to begin that pink peach color is yeah strange. that's your dominant color which is odd because uh i am i am not a flamingo yeah uh i they don't want everything to be pink by default and i also don't know whether or not that should be like should i be categorizing effortless things as pink and oh. urgent things as red. I, I don't really get its internal philosophy to see whether or not it does mesh up with mine, but this is always the problem with these apps is that if you make them too prescriptive to the app's philosophy, then you're turning people off because you're like, ain't nobody got time to, to unless it, it immediately wires with my brain, then I'm going to reject it. And then if you make it too loosey goosey, and then what is it like, even doing? And what is it doing? Well, and and there, there's sort of three pressures on color schemes. There's uh, uh, some that you could change and affect, some you cannot. Uh, one is uh, uh, your target demographic. It could be that they identified a space where this is a, an appropriate palette that's going to appeal to them. The other is it could be for efficacy. It could be that studies show that this, you know, color palette is effective for, you know, not, not alarming you and putting too much pressure on you. But then on top of that, you have... Um, branding competitive space where it's like, sorry, if, if like a harsh green is already taken by some other app, then you can't also try to occupy yeah. that space. Otherwise you look like yeah. a ripoff of the thing. Uh, I, 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 I feel like I, I looked into their roadmap stuff and, uh, colors and labels are on the roadmap of things to, up, to kind of beef up. But yeah, right now it's the, it's the red, the blue and the green or black, uh, and the red is and not you also great. get a color wheel, which I found myself using a lot, but also it doesn't save the custom color. Uh, yeah. So it's like if I use the color wheel, I would like it. I would like for the app to make the pink one go away. <laughs> if I'm actively trying to make anything not pink, then I would like for that to go away. I would like for some of the stuff that I'm using over and over and over again to appear there because the goal is to keep some kind of uniformity between tasks. It's making it a little difficult. Another little quibble. Yeah, go for it. Get them. No locations. So yeah. on like to dos via the the Apple thing, you could say when I leave home or when I leave here or when I get home or when I get to work. And, yeah. and or like I'm, it's at that place. Like just adding an address field to the event. Yeah, there's not one in structured. Hmm. Uh, and so that's a bit of a bummer. I uh, I uh, I did have one event where it pulled it in from my Google Calendar and it did bring in it brought in like a location link in the description stuff but yeah that's still not like a location so that you can add Google travel. Calendar yeah you have to go in and like enable the calendars specifically uh, per calendar I think but uh, my my kind of trouble with it and I'll try another few weeks or so because I also got the month of the premium thing. Uh, I paid for the month of the premium thing is I was trying to do this, this both worlds thing with things and structured the things app and the structured app. Um, be, and, and, and I didn't really, um, I kind of didn't commit to one. And so I would have everything pop up twice, basically for the past week, it would show up on the things. And so I'd have to go in and like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of these cause I'm doing this on structured right now. And then on structured, uh, I was partly like not paying attention to the notifications. Like, I think that was a thing is like, I kind of need it to kick my butt a little bit more on like, Hey, this is like a calendar alert. This is, this is something that should be prominent. Um, so I kind of, uh, I've, I've rolled back some of the stuff on my things app where some of the repeating tasks are gone or paused and trying to see what it looks like set up in structured, remaking those things in structured. But um, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of foibles. There are a lot of things that are not perfect. Ample foibles. Ample foibles. Uh, can I, can I ask a question 
uh, when it comes to all the digital apps, yeah. part of the reason, because I've had a, a week to reflect on why I still dig lists and note cards and stuff. Mm. And one of the things that no digital app has been able to give me is the satisfaction of crossing out things. You yeah. Know? And um, that in and of itself is a very nice dopamine hit of thing done, you know, right. but also uh, when I sit down part of, you know, cause I'm using note cards for, if you missed last week, um, I sit down and whatever my latest ones are on top of a pile of nothing, but just dozens and dozens of cards with crossed off items. And uh, I, I wonder if there's any digital analog to that, that, that does a persistent reminder of, You've done a You're lot of stuff. You're doing it. Yes, yes. yes. Look mm -hmm. at how much you've accomplished. Uh, uh, and, and I think that's part of why, in a weird way, this mountain of note cards with crossed out things is kind of a, a, a little bit of a back rub trophy for, for yeah. you to glance at. I think the most direct uh, the, the most direct comparison would be Trello, I think, where uh, you kind of have columns and each column has items. And there that would be kind of an equivalent, I think, to... Uh, sort of the postcard and you move them among different columns or whatever you want to classify them as. Um, that might, that so might be get, something. You, you get a trophy case of done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, that, that I, I think there's a, a uh, there's stuff like that, but, but you're right. There is a, f an analog element to, you know, writing stuff out, scratching stuff out that isn't always really uh, replicable digitally. Uh, I talked on this show, uh, gosh, maybe a few months ago about the, the habits app. Um, and the reason I found it was through a post from daring fireball who read this, uh, blog post that the habits app folks wrote about, uh, called the world's most satisfying checkbox. And so the habits app is a like, Hey, you want to do a hat? You want to build a new habit? It takes 60 times. Uh, once a day you do your thing and then you go in the app and you hit the button and, that's a very simple app if you just have a big checkbox. But they have a like, really actually great uh, blog talking about what feeling they wanted to get into when you actually click the checkbox. So it's like 3D animated. There's a holding element. There's music element, animation, merging all that stuff together. Um, oh, that's interesting because like rather than just tapping a checkbox, if, if you held it and you actually felt a building up vibration and it was like pulling back a, a, a bow and releasing an arrow right. and seeing an explosion, you're going to feel better. And, yeah. And <laughs> you're right. They do that with the force feet. You, you actually feel your feet like, ding, you know, it's a whole, and then the, the rest of the app has like trackers and, and graphics stuff as well, but it's pretty good. It, but, but uh, that's really, I think that's a really interesting article. We'll have it in the, in the show notes as well, but um, it, it just goes to show that we still have a feel uh, gap in digital digital apps, digital organization. Uh, I, I, yeah. Here's the other thing. I've kind of found when I did the structured app, I stopped doing some of the stuff that I had been doing in terms of writing stuff on my whiteboard. Oh, really? And like... That's bad, actually. I know, yeah. And that's the thing that I'm like, oh, wait. Like, I am bad at recurring things. I, my default is, especially when I have a lot on my plate, to be very hand to mouth, mm. uh, which is the, the habits that I want to get away from. So doing any kind of interference in my normal thing of, of like, all right, wake up, write out my day, uh, uh, re cross-reference that with Google Calendar. That, I guess that, that was the problem. And that's why, why like the, the initial um, structured thing was, was kind of a, a, a real bummer was that I'm like, okay, if it can't immediately do the things that Google Calendar is doing for me. Yeah. And also that was the other thing is like, it was hard. I use Google Calendar a lot with guests for, for PX3 oh, yeah. where I will share calendar invites. calendar invites and events and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like, Man, I'm gonna it delete might not, structured. It, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete it right now. Yeah, because uh, it might not oh, wow. be for you. It is. Yeah. It, it's the not. The more a, I think about it, it's poison, and it needs to get out of my life. <laughs> I mean, it, and and you're right. It's not exactly fantastical. Fantastical, like it is not uh, hyper productivity focused. The way uh, you know, it's, it's that's a, still a major. Now difference I'm managing my subscription. Oh goodness! I'm gonna manage it. Manage the hell out of it. Off the planet. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, I'm confirming my cancellation. Uh, but listeners, if you have an idea, if, what what do you use for 
your day planning, your task planning. Send it in. We got the show, the email notes uh, in the show notes there. Um, cool. Well, uh, I I don't know. Anybody got any other, other after things things? We just got a little bit of an update from uh, from last week's uh, um, last week's show. I, uh, uh, I I got something, but I think it's a big enough thing that I should wait until next week. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I already tune in next week on the yeah. After Things podcast. Hey, yeah. support us. Go get this early over on Patreon, patreoncom slash Yep. And yep. Uh, support Sweet. us. That's it. Support us for for the love of jeez. Good, good. For, for the love of shoe. For the love good of luck, Chewbacca. Yeah. For the love of Chewbacca. Oh, Chewbacca's oh, mercy. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, Chewbacca, you really did it this time. <laughs> Brian and Justin and Bryce. It's been after. Hey. There we go. A little one. Brought to you by Woods Beer. <laughs> when you're in the woods and you say, I want a beer, you yeah. better hope that somebody that a, is listening. That a, you better hope that a gigantic truck is jackknifed in the middle of the highway, <laughs> spilling a bunch of beer into the woods. Otherwise, you're kind of screwed. You're up a river without a beer. Oh, no. Like, like my friend Schubert once told me. Schubert. <laughs> ar, 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 ar. <laughs> Sorry. All right, anyway, we'll be back with Core Killers a little later today. Bye. See you.